With more and more people driving Teslas and other brands of EVs around right now, there seem to be more and more electric vehicle myths that are cropping up out there. So I figured I would do an episode and set the record straight, and since everyone loves top 10 lists, I figured I'd do top 10 EV myths and the truth behind them. Let's take a look. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I know a lot of the people who follow this channel closely probably know the reality behind a lot of these myths, but even for you guys, there may be one or two that you don't know the real facts behind, so it might be worth watching this, but for people who are just starting out in the EV world or who are interested in EVs or who have heard a lot of rumors about how bad they are on a number of different fronts, this episode is particularly for you. So let's get started. So I know I said top 10, but I'm going to start with a bonus one because this one's just a little out there. I haven't heard this one myself, but one of my Patreon patrons who drives Uber has heard this not once, but multiple times. And that is people keep asking him where the extension cord for the vehicle is. The car does not have to be plugged in to drive. I just can't even imagine what the highways would look like if you were stringing out these giant extension cords behind each car. So no, the car does not have to be plugged in to drive. It runs on batteries, not on direct electricity off of the grid. Speaking of which, the number one myth, EVs will kill the electric grid. I actually have done an entire in-depth episode on this, so definitely check that out, where I pretty much disprove that even if you made the entire world EVs right now, the electric grid could almost handle it. But what's going on here is that the electric grid is changing as more and more EVs are being put on the roads. So yes, if you waved a magic wand and there was 100% EVs on the road right now, it would be very difficult to impossible for the EV grid to take it, but you have to remember the electric grid is evolving as these cars are coming online. And of course, we're also getting more diffuse types of energy like solar panels on people's roofs. And that really offsets the stress that the EVs will put on the grid. And it's also worth remembering that most electric companies already have some sort of EV program where they reduce the cost drastically if you charge your car overnight when electrical uses are not that high. So between a more robust electric grid, solar panels locally, and electric companies encouraging people to charge at off-peak times, it's really not that big of an issue. Again, if you waved a magic wand and all, you know, hundreds of millions to billions of cars instantly changed to EVs, yes, it would be a problem, but that's not the way things like this work. So it's going to take five or 10 or 15 years for this to all play out. And so it's not going to be an issue because the electric grid will adjust. Myth number two, you can't go on a road trip with an EV. That is patently false. Last summer, we went on an over 2,000 mile road trip down to Austin, Texas, and also to Boca Chica to see Starbase and to see Giga Texas. And we are just about to next week go up to my Princeton 35th reunion, wow, <laughs> in New Jersey, and then to visit my son. So we'll be putting a whole bunch more miles on our Tesla during that time. It's very, very easy to do road trips with EVs. Yes, you do have to, you know, wait around for like 30 or 40 minutes to charge at superchargers as opposed to five or 10 minutes at a gas station, but it, it adds a little bit of time. That's mostly what it is, but you can easily go on road trips with EVs, no problem at all. Next, myth number three, and you can see that a lot of these are going to have to do with batteries. EVs can't sit parked for a long time due to battery leakage. Yes, the cars will actually reduce some range over time if they have things running like sentry mode or if they have overheating protection on or something like that. So it will drain the battery somewhat for that, but the batteries don't leak on their own. If it's a, a relatively nice environment like inside your garage or something like that and the temperature is, you know, relatively pleasant, like 20 degrees centigrade or around 70 degrees Fahrenheit, they can go for a really, really long time without losing hardly any mileage at all. Remember, these battery packs are like 75 kilowatt hours plus. That's a lot of energy. It doesn't take that much energy to just you know, do basic maintenance, run a computer every once in a while to check up on things or stuff like that. So no, they don't leak significantly if they sit over time. Recently, we went on a trip actually to Austin for the Giga Texas thing, and we left the Tesla in the parking garage for four days. And even with sentry mode running and everything, it only lost about 30 miles of range. So it was no big deal. Myth number four, and this one's a biggie, EVs will catch fire and it's a very, very bad thing. 
I know the Chevy Bolt has not done any favors to EVs out there, but EVs do not catch fire more often than gas cars. In fact, they catch fire way, 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 way less than gas cars. And Tesla just released an impact report for 2021, so I have a lot of data from them, so I'm gonna talk about them specifically, but of course you can check for your own EV brand if you're interested to see what the comparison is. But Teslas in particular are about 11 times less likely to catch fire than a gas car. Remember, in a gas car, you've got flammable liquids and explosions going on all the time. So the chance of a fire is pretty high. In batteries, you do have heat and a lot of chemical reactions, but data shows that it is much, much less likely to catch fire than a combustion engine with flammable fluid being piped through it. In other words, gasoline. So again, the reality is that Teslas are 11 times less likely to catch fire than an ICE or internal combustion engine vehicle. Myth number five, EVs are too expensive to buy. Yes, they do cost a lot of money up front. I did an entire episode on this really, really breaking it down, comparing the Tesla to a car that's half the cost of the Tesla, as well as two cars that are around the same price from BMW and Mercedes. And it turns out that the cost of ownership for a Tesla is much more like a car that's about half the price of the sticker price of the vehicle than it is for cars that are close to the price of the vehicle. So you can actually afford to buy a Tesla. Yes, it can be a little bit difficult to finance it because they are expensive up front, but they cost a whole lot less to operate over time. And one of the reasons for this is that there's almost no maintenance involved with an EV vehicle. As opposed to an ICE car where you have to do oil changes and you have to do maintenance and all sorts of replacements and things like that, the first service call for an EV vehicle, at least for a Tesla, is four years into ownership. So that really, really reduces the cost. And of course, there's a lot less cost involved in charging a battery than there is in filling up a tank of gasoline. All right, myth number six, they are worse for the environment. And that means that they cost more in terms of carbon output and things like that to build. And then using the dirty electric grid with like coal and natural gas and stuff like that, they're much worse for the environment over time as you own the vehicle. The reality behind this is that they do have a bigger environmental cost up front. They cost a little bit more in terms of carbon output and things like that, greenhouse gas emissions to build the vehicles. But in only 6,500 miles, and I'll show you the thing from Tesla, they actually have this data, in only 6,500 miles, which is about a half a year of driving, they become cleaner even with a dirty electric grid charging them than it is to drive an internal combustion engine vehicle. And after that, you know, if you own the car for three or five years plus, they're much, much better for the environment overall. And remember that the cleaner the grid that you have, the better the EV is for the environment. That's something you can't do with an internal combustion engine vehicle. You can't make clean gasoline. Gasoline is gasoline. But if you get solar panels, or even if you use cleaner electricity from your supplier, that means that your car is even greener. Myth number seven, the batteries will die after only a few thousand miles, like 20 or 30,000 miles, and then it costs a fortune to replace these batteries. This is simply not the case. The batteries last somewhere around 500,000 miles right now, which is far longer than most anybody drives a vehicle. They do degrade slightly at the beginning. In other words, if they have like say 300 miles of range, right when you purchase the vehicle, it might go down to like 280 or 285 miles after a period of time, but then that levels off and they become very, very consistent over time. So you can drive them for hundreds of thousands of miles without needing to replace the batteries. So that's the truth behind that myth. Myth number eight, it takes a really long time to charge these vehicles. Now this does vary according to vehicles. Some are much slower than others, like a Nissan Leaf is a very, very slow vehicle to charge. But a Tesla, for example, you can charge it basically from 10 to 80 or 90% in about 35 or 40 minutes at a supercharger. It's pretty fast. Yes, not as fast as filling up a gas tank. But again, if you're at 10% or something like that of your battery charge, you can put on 100 miles in like 20 minutes. So, you know, at the bottom of the thing when the battery is relatively low, you can charge it up really, really fast. By the time you go in, go to the bathroom, get something to eat, come back out again, you've already got that extra mileage on there. So they're not that slow. Yes, they're slower than gas cars, but they're not that slow to charge. Myth number nine, you can only charge at superchargers. This is not the case. You can easily charge at your house. You can even use a 120 volt plug and just plug it into a regular you know, wall outlet back there. It will charge very, very slowly if you do that. But when I go to my parents' house, they don't have an EV charging thing. So I just use that. What we have at our house is we have a, a dryer plug just that we use for our dryer. And we purchased a little box and it splits it. So it goes to the dryer and it goes to the car 
car and you can either charge the car or you can use the dryer, but we didn't have to put in any ele extra electrical stuff, no big deal. It just runs, it charges up overnight. Every day you have the car is, you know, charged up as much as you want it to be. You never have to go to the gas station. <laughs> it's really, really nice. So you don't only charge at superchargers. You can charge at home very, very easily. Now, of course, the caveat to that is if you live in an apartment in an urban environment where there's no access to plugs anywhere around, yes, that will become more of a problem. And that is for some people an issue. We're actually going to do an episode relatively soon where we're going to be going to Brooklyn to visit my son after our reunions. And we're gonna talk about that because we're gonna see how difficult it is to charge and use the Tesla while we're in the New York City area in an urban environment where there isn't a garage or something easy to plug your car into. So. If you're interested in that, definitely subscribe to this channel so you can check that out in the near future. And finally, myth number 10, EVs don't work in the rain or the snow or any other inclement kind of weather. So this is completely false. They're actually even better in the rain than gas cars are because they don't have to take air in. They don't suck air in to burn with the gasoline so they can actually go through very, very deep water. Don't recommend doing that because it's probably not the best thing in the world for your car. But you know, if you get caught in a flood or something like that, you're going to get out of it more easily in your EV than you are in an ice car. And you might think, oh no, the thing's gonna short circuit and blow up or something like that. But these batteries are completely environmentally sealed away from everything. So you can drive it right through water without any problems, no electrical, you know, discharge, no getting shocked, nothing like that. And the car will keep going where a gas car would actually stall. So EVs are actually better for inclement weather than ice cars are. Alrighty, so that's the top 10 plus a bonus of myths about EVs and the reality behind them. You can see that for the most part, the myths are just myths. There is a little bit of a grain of truth to some of these myths, but for the most part, EV cars are really, really great to drive. And in a lot of ways, they're actually easier to own than internal combustion engine vehicles. I, of course, would love to know what you have to say about this, so definitely let me know in the comments. Also, if there are other myths out there, let me know about those as well, because I, I I could probably do another top 10 list relatively quickly. So let me know and I can always do a top 10 part two or something like that if you all are interested. In the meantime, thank you all so much for watching this. If you enjoyed the episode, please do like it so other people can find it because that's how YouTube works. And also consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much for your help and your support. A lot of this top 10 list came from you guys. So I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. And of course, if you want to join the team, check out the link in the description. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have Tesla bot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.